the question that I keep hearing is, in our AccuCam product that measures and controls color from the work, how do you do that without directly measuring black? How do you do that without infrared? The uh, quick answer to that question is we don't need to. Of course, that's confusing, so I, I'll, I'll go on with that. Uh, but ultimately, that's the, the answer is that it's not necessary. To give you the background, there's a number of ways that you could control color within the work. One way would be to just take an RGB camera and then do a conversion to CMYK. The problem with that, though, is that that conversion from RGB to CMYK gives us one particular value of CMYK that could have given us that RGB. It doesn't give us the particular values of RGB, and that's, that's the problem. We don't know whether we have a lot of black or a little bit of black because those two get traded off between each other. Uh, so we have a, a possible method there that, it, that isn't going to work very well. It's not going to balance the RG, uh, excuse me, the CMYK against the black. You don't have enough data to get four pieces of information out of three numbers. So, hence comes along the, the second thought along this line. The second thought being, well, how about we add in another channel that specifically measures the infrared? Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, back, I think it was 97, uh, I had a patent that issued on uh, doing uh, register control from the image and there I relied on an infrared camera to, in addition to an RGB camera so that I could separate the two out. The really cool thing about infrared is if you go just a little bit beyond the visible, up around 800 nanometers, you see an image that is just the black ink. The CMY, the cyan, magenta, and yellow inks all go away. They look just like the paper. So using that you can look at the infrared channel and you can figure out how much black is down and then essentially subtract that out of the other three channels to get the CMY. So that is a technique that can be used using the infrared. You can derive and measure each of those four inks. You can measure the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black from an RGB eye camera. Uh, that's the second way that you could do color control from the work and some of our competitors have done that. That RGBI camera approach would work. We've uh, built such a camera, we know how to make it work, it's all, it's all feasible, but uh, it optimizes the wrong thing because the, uh, it's, it's a subtle question here. Are you trying to control the ink or are you trying to control the color? I think you're not really trying to control the ink. That's not the final goal to put a certain amount of picoliters per square inch of, of ink down. The, the final goal is to make sure that the color of it is the right color. What we've done is built a camera that measures accurately the C-Lab values. Those are standard color metric units. It measures those values and then based on those it decides the best way to adjust cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in order to get the color as close as possible. The color is seen by the human eye. The basis of it is to be able to start first off with a model, a mathematical system of equations that says, if I adjust the cyan ink key, these are the changes that I'm going to see in the image. This is how the color of that pixel and that pixel and that pixel, that's how they would change. So uh, once you have that model and you've tuned it, to understand all of the different combinations of CMYK, in other words, what would happen with any pixel. Uh, once that has been put in place, you uh, develop another mathematical process that decides of all possible CMYK moves, of all possible adjustments of the ink keys, which method, which adjustment is going to get you the closest to the C-Lab values that you have targeted. If you're interested in more of the science behind it, uh, you should check out our website, quadtechworld.com. We have a bunch of white papers there that uh, I'm sure can satisfy your curiosity. Thank you.